I think this is my 15 seconds to, to gather in. I, I was here last year at an Ignite talk. Um, oh no, this is my slide, so yeah. Can I? Am I up there? Uh, I talked about Rebecca Black last year. Uh, this year I'm talking about Mega Man. Um, when I was a kid, I used to rush home after school and play Mega Man obsessively. I would memorize all the moves. It was a way for me to completely remove myself from the school day. Um, and now I'm an educator, and so I'm thinking a lot about the tensions between fun and learning in my own teaching practice. Because fun and learning are not opposed, but sometimes when you plan for them together, um, unpredictable things can happen in both fun and learning. So I want to talk about some of the ways that fun fails. Um, sometimes we develop what are kind of like philosophies, in some sense they're pathologies, of uh, fun and learning that uh, simplify a really complicated relationship um, that's really hard to pin down. The first philosophy is that all learning should look like learning. I call this the classroom syndrome. This is the idea that you should be able to demonstrate learning value to the teacher at all times. Um, there are really good reasons why teachers are afraid of fun. Uh, in her book, Inside Teaching, Mary Kennedy talks about how uh, teachers always feel, or many teachers feel, that they're always like one false move away from total anarchy in the classroom, and they try to maintain what's considered to be an aura of tranquility at all times. Lots of risks are involved. On the other hand, kids also have uh, certain philosophies. One is that all fun should not look like learning. You should also be able to perform fun in a way that you can demonstrate to the teacher. This is kind of what I was dealing with, I think, when I went home and I watched television and I played Mega Man. These were sort of private spaces for me. And one thing that I've learned as a teacher is that the easiest way to get kids interested in like STEM competencies and school materials is to lecture them about their popular culture. Uh, the third philosophy is the idea that all learning should be fun. This is what I call the rap and granny syndrome. And the problem with rap and granny is not that she believes, or he, as I am a rap and granny myself, that uh, learning should be fun, but that they impose what fun means in a community. And I've had this experience myself. I tried to teach DJing to a group of middle school students, and I was really fascinated to see that they didn't care about the pop music I played in the classroom. They wanted to show me how to do the long division to do the cross multiply and divide equation. And finally, there's the serial mind blower who believes that fun isn't just fun, it's also learning. Uh, my students sometimes resent me when I tell them that the fun that they just had is also going to be on the test. Fun can be a source of learning, although sometimes we have to reflect on it uh, when we're adults. And learning can often be fun, but these are, they have a very uh, unpredictable and sometimes unstable relationship, and there are a lot of risks associated with it. And I want to talk about some of the things that I've noticed. First, it's important to recognize that both fun and learning for young people are often shaped by adults. That when we are transparent about our own uh, fun and learning objectives, either, whether it's top down in a lecture hall or bottom up in a makerspace, um, we uh, better understand the uh, relationship our students have to fun and learning. And these are just sort of uh, extremes. Nobody is one of these categories. And I want to focus on the bottom two because I fall into these traps all the time. I do what's called the bait and switch. The bait and switch is where you claim fun, but kids don't actually have fun. <laughs> they come to resent the spoonful of sugar that is helping the medicine go down. Um, the second one that I found is related, which is that practice really sucks. It's hard and it's painful. And uh, sometimes there aren't good ways to help uh, students develop the practice they need, whether they're trying to play music or participate in an online forum. There is a little bit of pain that can be inevitably involved. Another idea is that interests are fairly malleable, and sometimes they're malleable by adults themselves. Uh, one of the most popular sports at an elementary school I work with is chess, because of a particularly charismatic chess teacher that leads them to national championships. And finally, there's the idea that sometimes students develop interests because they don't want you to engage with them. They're private interests, and they're designed specifically to keep adults and mentors out. This is kind of where I land with uh, Mega Man, where it's a bit of a private space that is connected to some of the transgressions that I would develop later in life that I also would not want to share in any learning setting whatsoever. You'll have to buy me a drink before I tell you what they are. So I want to return to these classroom teachers because I want to appreciate the risks 
that classroom teachers feel when they try to consciously put fun in their learning. When you fail at learning, you feel it in your heart and your head. But when you fail at fun, you feel it in your gut. It's like getting kicked in the stomach. And so I'd like you guys to share with me, if you could, times in your teaching practice where fun has failed. Because I think we can learn a lot together if we can sort of admit um, when we tried to have fun and it just didn't work out. Thank you.